Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps for setting up a book jacket design in Adobe Illustrator. These dimensions are specifically going to fit this mock-up, which I can post a link to in the description. First, we're going to go to File, New, and we will be working in inches. The width is going to be 19 inches and the height 8.25 inches. We want one artboard and for bleed, we're going to just tap the arrow up once to 0 0.125 inches. And we want CMYK color mode and create. First, you're going to want to make sure that your guides and rulers are turned on. You can see this red line around the border of the document and that is the document bleed. If you don't see that, you can go to view guides and then this may say show guides or that shortcut is control or command semicolon to toggle that and you also want to make sure that your rulers are turned on and you can turn those on by going to view rulers show rulers or that shortcut is control or command r and those are just around this border of the document for creating the panels, we're going to use the rectangle tool, M for shortcut. And I'm just going to click on the screen. And the width of this inside flap is 3.35 by 8.25. OK. And you can change the color of that if you would like. I just copied my colors. It'll be a little bit easier to see each panel separately. And you might want to use your alignment tools in this. So up here at the top, I want to align to the artboard. And right now I'm going to align horizontally to the left and center vertically. And now I can just copy this by holding down Option Shift or doing Control C, Control V. And now I want this one to the far right for the other inside flap. Now for the back cover, I'm going to hold down Option, Shift, and create another copy. Or you could create a new rectangle. And right now we're just going to change the width up here in the top. We want 5.9. And the back cover and front cover are the same, so holding down Option Shift. Make a copy. And then our final spine should be, I'll make one more rectangle, 0.5 inches by 8.25. And this should be centered and centered, both vertically and horizontally. So now on this layer, I'm just going to rename in my Layers panel template. If you don't see very many panels right now, you might want to change your workspace up here in the top right and switch workspace. Let's go to Essentials Classic. And you can expand this palette to see it better. So there's our template. I'm going to make a new layer, and this is going to be where my guides will be. And to drag guides over here where you see the rulers, that's where you can click and drag from the ruler to create a guide. So I want this guide to be where my panel is. And I can hold down Option Shift to drag another one. Or up at the top, you can also change the location of the guide on your artboard. I'm just going to make guides where my panels are. Another helpful thing to do is we're going to select all of the panels except for the spine and go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And I'm going to offset this. You can see I'd already done it previously. I'm using my arrow keys, or you could type in a value. But let's create a offset of minus 0 0.375. And I have Preview checked on, and you can see these boxes being created. And click OK. 
And with those boxes, this is going to create margins for us so we can make sure we have plenty of space between the text and the edge of the flap. And now we're going to go to View, Guides, Make Guides, or that shortcut is Control 5. And I'm going to move those guides to the Guides layer. You can see I can toggle the guides right now. And depending on whether your cover artwork has backgrounds on any of the flaps, you're going to want to make sure and extend any of those backgrounds of your artwork so they meet this red line of your document bleed. So with my guides locked, I'm going to select all of my template panels, holding down Option. I'm going to pull one of the top or bottom anchor points. And you can see now I can just select one to extend that background and the right one. So that way, whenever we save it for print, we have bleed. The background bleeds all the way outside of the trim, and those crop marks will trim through. So we don't have any white slivers that show up on the finished piece. On the front and back covers, we might want to create a larger margin. So you can reduce that manually. Maybe 4.75 will be good. And now we have a better guide of where we should keep our text. And then I would create a layer just above template for the artwork. There are a couple different ways you might want to add text. The first one, you click on the type tool, is to just click anywhere on the artboard. And this is point text. And point text is nice because when you click on it, you can see on the corner that I can hold down shift to scale it. So maybe your book title and maybe the author might be in point text. Now for the flaps, one of the flaps is going to have the author bio on it. And using the type tool, we want to create area text. So this time we're going to click and drag to create a text box. And it nicely fills in some placeholder copy. And now depending on whether or not your flap has a background or not, in this case, just for visibility, I'm going to change it to white. And a good starting point for that body copy text if you go to either your character palette up here or open window type character, you can see mine's here. You can choose your type. And then I would start with nine point font kind of as a minimum. And that letting height or line height, usually one and a half is good, or let's go with 14. And for kerning right here, it says auto. I always set that to optical. So now we have some placeholder copy for the author bio, and you might want to duplicate that on your first draft for the other inner flap, whatever text content you have. As for justification under paragraph, or over here at the right, you have some alignment of either center alignment or justification. You can also adjust the paragraph height. So under paragraph, you can increase the space after. Sometimes that helps legibility and reading those shapes or blocks. And then you might want to make a copy of some of your point text for some of the other inner lab content. And then maybe on the back, you have some excerpts from the book. So depending on whether you have a light background or a dark background, choose a color of the text that's going to have good contrast. Last thing for this video, I want to talk about generating a barcode. I have, I have a website here. And you can type in a real or fictional ISBN. 
and either download the image or you can just right click, copy image, go into Illustrator and paste, edit, paste, or control V. And then you want that to be a reasonable size. So maybe one and a half inches or so. You'll see that the white is pretty cropped there. So you might either want to create a white box around it. And move it, arrange it below. So there's a nice spacing around it. Or if you do have a really light background color, you can select the barcode and go to transparency. And we could do something like multiply or darken. You do want to make sure you have good contrast, though, so that will function and scan properly. But that looks a little bit nicer on the design. I hope this video helps you with getting set up on your book jacket design. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Take care.